Today we're talking about wide characters. Welcome back everybody, we're talking about text again today. Now I recently made a video about Unicode, what it is, check that out if you missed it. But today I want to start talking about how we can actually deal with Unicode characters in our programs. And I thought wide characters would be a good place to start. Now, if you have any experience programming in C or C++, you are probably familiar with the char data type. That is typically a single byte. That in ASCII represents a single character of text. Oh, back when the world was simpler. Actually, old fashioned chars, single byte chars can be really annoying. I mentioned that actually in a recent video. Check that out, I'll link in the description if you missed it. But now we are dealing with multilingual Unicode text where we have way more than 256 characters and we have things like emojis and all sorts of things like that. And so a single character per symbol or per code point or per character, whatever you want to call it, a single byte is not going to be sufficient to store the symbols that we have in our arsenal now. And when it comes to representing Unicode text in our programs, we have a few different options and wide characters are just one of those options. Now a wide character is... Uh, it's implementation defined as well. Come on C, just standardize your freedom loving types. Now in an ideal world, a wide character or a W char underscore T is four bytes long. And that is big enough to hold any Unicode character out there or code point if you wanna be fancy. That's the official term within Unicode land. We don't call them characters because that's confusing with chars. We call them code points, I guess. And of course, if you're on Windows, heaven help you, then I've been told by people that I know who still play around in Windows land, the W char T in Windows is still two bytes and your text is going to be encoded in UTF-16. And that is for historical reasons that, in my opinion, don't make any sense anymore. Now, I didn't have a Windows machine to test it on, but the fact that this might even possibly be true is just super annoying. I mean, who uses UTF-16 anymore? It's kind of the worst. But yeah, if we ignore Windows, which sounds like a great plan to me for the rest of this video, at least, then a WCHAR T, or a wide character, is a four byte integer that is large enough to hold any Unicode code point in the Unicode standard. And a string of wide characters is just an array of these four byte ints. And there's no fancy encoding. Well, technically it's UTF-32, but that, does, that almost doesn't count as an encoding type. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but it, it's basically just the code points stored there. It's just an array of 32-bit integers. Of course, it still has the signed-unsigned ambiguity issue that you run into with the one byte char data type in C that I mentioned in my previous video. Also, the C11 standard introduced char 16 underscore T and char 32 underscore T types that are unsigned and always the same size which could be useful if, again, if you're interested in writing more portable code. But to make things a little more concrete, let's look at how this works in an actual program. So again, as is common in my videos, simple program right here, uh, just a main. I also have a make file here that's gonna compile things for us. Now, let's say that I want to declare, let's start off, say I wanna declare a string and I want it to be stored as an array of wchar underscore t. So let's say I want to have a, an array of wide characters, then I can do something like this. It looks just like when we're defining a, a typical C string, except we're using a different type, wchar underscore t. Uh, let's call it my wide string. And then let's say we want to initialize it to something. Now in this case, like so you could think of it, we could just say this is wide characters. Yay, something like this, some text. But let's say that I actually want this to be a wide character array here. So let's say that, let's let's come in here and let's also add in an emoji, because why not? So if I want this to be stored as a wide character array, then I need to put a L at the beginning. This tells the compiler that I want this string constant to be stored as wide characters. Why it's an L not W, I'm not sure, but I think the L is for long, which, so it's kind of like a long character, I guess, instead of a wide character. And now we can come down here and we can, let's just say we wanted to print this string out. We can say, you know, printf my wide string equals, um, now we can't just, usually we would do percent %s here, and we would just say we want my wide string. This is not going to work because if you say percent %s, it's assuming a char pointer because it's a w char underscore t pointer. We need to put ls here, which is a long string. So again, why not w? I don't know, 
but it is L. Okay, so this is one way to do it and this will work fine. This should work fine. Once we actually compile stuff and try to run it, we should be okay here. We also have another variant of printf called wprintf. Here we're using a W instead of an L. Can't make up our minds, I guess. But the idea here is what if I wanted, let's say we wanted to do the exact same thing we did up here, but instead I wanted to actually have, let's say that I wanna have emojis or you know Unicode text in here and I want this format string here to be a wide character as well, then I can put an L here, so that's cool. So that's when we use wprintf is I say, I want the format string to be a wide character. And then here I can do things like, let's go in and drop, you know, drop some random emoji here and say, okay, this is going to be, uh, we're gonna print out our string. Let's just print out our, our long string here. And let's also print out its length. So length equals, and then percent zu. So here we're gonna print out how many wide characters are here. So again, we just pass in my wide string here and that's fine, but we wouldn't wanna use str length like we would use with regular character arrays. Um, so we have a different set of string functions that we can use with these wide character arrays. So specifically we have WCS, L-E-N, that's wide character string length, and we'll just pass in my wide string. Okay, so this is gonna tell you not how many bytes long the thing is, but it will tell you how many wide characters long this string is. And like I mentioned, we have a variety of different string functions for wide character arrays. This is just one example. I won't go through all of them here, but here is a list of the available functions. Let me know if there's any of these that you particularly want me to look at in future videos. So now at this point, let's just make sure my program is working. Let's come in here and compile it. Okay. Looks like we might be having a little bit of trouble. I think I forgot a header file. So specifically, we need to come in here and include wchar.h. Okay, now we compile. And now if we come in here, now that we have, now that we are compiling and we run it, well, bad news, we get no output. So that's not good. What's going on? The problem comes down to localization. Now this is something that is going to require more videos. You know, I can't cover localization in five minutes, but the main idea is that localization just allows us to write code that can then detect and adapt to different language settings and cultural settings on different machines. So like if I take the same code and I run it, you know, here in the United States, or I run it someplace in Europe or in Asia or someplace where you have different language settings, I want the code to adapt and do sensible things. That's what localization is all about. And one of the ways that it does this is through locales. Now the program's locale is basically the language settings for this program. And the problem is, is my program right now is defaulting to the basic C locale and that only supports ASCII characters. So when I start printing out emojis, it just goes, I, I don't know what to do here. And it just doesn't print them out. So if we want all of this wide character stuff to, to work, then I need to come up here and add another header file. So let's include locale.h. And now I'm going to change the program's locale. And so I'm gonna do that. There's a function called set locale. And we do it like this. So I'm just gonna pass in locale all, so LC all, that basically says, I wanna change the entire locale. There, You can change just parts of it if you want. And I could set it to something like, so you pass in a string here, I could set it to something like EN US, so this is English, US English, encoded in UTF-8. So this happens to be the locale that my machine is currently using by default. So if you come down here and say, env grep lang, you can see this is in fact my locale right here. Now I could also also do this if you just want to use the default so we can come in here and we could also if we just leave this string blank then what it's going to do so say that I, I don't explicitly state what locale I want to use if I just leave it blank what that is going to do is basically going to just use the terminals default so on my machine these two lines of code are doing exactly the same thing if you're on a different locale then they may not okay so but now if we come in here now if we come in and compile our code and we run it. Now our wide character output shows up, which is great. Now, as I mentioned before, wide characters are just one way to store Unicode text, and there are a few pros and cons to using wide character arrays. Okay, the main pro is that it's fairly simple. So say, for example, that I want to process a string character by character or code point by code point. Let's say I just wanna go through and print out the code points then I can simply do this with a for loop. So I can just say for int i equals zero, i is less than, let's use this WCS len function again, and to, yeah, to get the length in, you know, the number of wide characters, 
and then I plus plus. And then in here, I can simply just say, I want to print out the code point values. Uh, let's print them out in hex with a space after them. So that's just gonna print out all the code points spaced out in hex. And then we can just do my wide str indexed to i. And then let's drop in a new line at the end just to make things look nicer. And so now if we compile it, we come in here and we run it. You can see, sure enough, we get all the code points. You know, the regular ASCII ones, which are only, they're shorter, they're only a byte long. I mean, they're stored as four bytes. It's only, it's not printing out the leading zeros, but then my emoji at the end, you can see it has its code point here. And so this works. And so anytime you're processing on a per character or per symbol basis, wide characters are really easy, right? Because it's just an array of code points. So you can go through and you can index really easily. If you want to find the fifth code point, you just jump to index five. You don't have to do any kind of searching through the string. You can just go to the index that you care about. If we were on the other hand, using a variable length encoding scheme like UTF-8, then this would be a bit more complicated and more about that in a future video. I'm definitely gonna get to UTF-8 because I think it's pretty cool because it's super popular and it's really cool. Also the main downside of wide character arrays is that these wide character strings are big. So the string up here is mostly made up of ASCII characters like we printed out down here, right? These things that can be stored possibly in one byte, but we are now using, because we're using W char underscore t, we are using four bytes per character. And so we're using about four times as much memory per symbol as we would otherwise have to use. And so you don't find a lot of people storing their text in wide character format for long periods of time or sending wide strings across the network because it just requires a lot more space and bandwidth. Of course, the exception to this might be if you speak only in emoji or if you are using a language that has code points with much higher value, then you might actually not lose much, and so this might be a reasonable thing to do. If you are primarily working with English text, this is probably a very inefficient way to store text. But internally, when processing Unicode strings, wide characters can simplify your program logic a bit, and in my opinion, that's usually a good thing. So I hope this helps you get a little bit of clarity about wide characters, what they are, and how you could use them. I hope this helps you in a future project, and until the next video, I'll see you later.